What is up, everyone? This is the Mad King Paradox. That's bringing you another One Piece discussion. And this is what I have been waiting for. I wanted to do this two weeks ago, but I wanted to make certain of something before I did it. And now they have done it. It's over with. I can do it now. Full confidence. Full speed ahead. Fucking A. This video is going to be discussing who... I don't want to say stronger. I'm going to say, who's the bigger threat? Whitebeard or Kaido? Whitebeard or Kaido? And all of this, I'm determining it on one person. Doflamingo. Don Quixote Doflamingo. Alright. As we all know, when Luffy and Law captured Caesar Clown and uh, cut off the Smiley production, this royally pissed off Doflamingo. And then Law pretty much... S I've already been over this. This is just a quick recap. Then Law states, we're taking over now. You are coming to an end. It's our turn now. Then... When they left, and Doflamingo was heading to Punk Hazard, he, uh, law, uh, law sent him a Denden Mushi, and it, and he pretty much told him, either you give up your ranking of Shishupakai, or Warlord, and permanently put a dent a huge, huge dent in your business, in your business, in your transactions, and everything you do, because you're a war. Since you're a warlord, the world government and the marines just, you know, just sweep it under the rug. They're just like, oh, he works for us. Just don't pay any attention to him. You know, oh, I don't care if he's selling people on the black market. I don't care if he's distributing weapons and smiley. And destroying countries left and right. No, just sweep that under the rug. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Trust me, we want this guy. He's fine. He says he has to give up that. Or they won't give him Caesar Clown. And he'll have to deal with Kaido. And you just saw sweat just Poor from Doflamingo. I mean, I'm guessing he lost about a gallon of water just pouring out of him. And then, in the, this week's chapter that just came out, at the end of the chapter, front page news. Don Quixote Doflamingo resigns as Shishubakai and denounces royalty in Dress Rosa. Holy shit. He gave up being a warlord so that he would not have to fuck with Kaido. Because, and I don't remember if they said this or if it was a discussion or what this was about, but as we all know, the warlords, so that they don't cause a disruption, you know, get the attention of the world government and the marines, they send proxies to other war... I said warlords, didn't I? Emperors. So that the emperors don't cause an uproar for the world government, they send proxies to deliver messages and shit like that. Like what Shanks did with Whitebeard with Rockstar. Before Shanks actually went to go see him himself. And who's the one they usually use as this intermediate between emperors? Doflamingo. And now that, oh, and Kaido apparently is the main seller for the artificial devil fruits that uh, Caesar Clown's been making. 
So that's going to greatly uh, hinder Kaido's, uh, Kaido's end game, whatever it might be. We don't know yet. We know he's got a hundred Del Fruit user army. So that's going to greatly hinder him. And now that Caesar Clown's been taken hostage and uh, Doflamingo either has to give up being a Shishupakai and greatly, permanently uh, hinder his efforts or not get Caesar Clown back and have to deal with Kaido. And he made the decision. He gave up being a Shishupakai. Now, what does this say? Because this says that Doflamingo, one of the most powerful characters we have seen in a long, long time. We've met some pretty powerful people, but Don Quixote has been just one of those insanely strong people that no one can touch. He fought Kuzan, Admiral Eokiji. He got covered in ice. He was frozen solid. Then just hockey. Bam! I'm out. Hands in his pockets. Walks off. Like that. He went up against an admiral. Or a former admiral. And just walked off like it was nothing. Frozen solid by Aoki G and just breaks out of it like it's nothing. That's powerful. And he ain't and he is not about to mess with Kaido. Alright. Now, number two that I'm basing this on is back at the Marine for War. He was his normal self. During the whole war, he was, uh, when he was taking on, uh, Ors Jr., when he cut off his, cut off his, well, half of his leg, he was just flying through the air, smiling as can be, when he was fighting Crocodile, when he was taking control of Jozu, everything he did during the war, he was just playing around. Whitebeard was standing right over there, and he was just playing around like it was nothing to him. Now, I do know that he never went up directly against Whitebeard. But during that whole war, before, during, and after, he didn't lose that smile on his face. He didn't break one bead of sweat. He didn't do nothing. But, Law threatens to get rid of Caesar, to not give him Caesar Clown and incur the wrath of Kaido. He just gets that, oh shit, look on his face. So, what does this hint at? This hints at Kaido being stronger than Whitebeard. I know, I know, I know. I don't want to believe it myself, but let's think about it. Whitebeard was the most powerful of the emperors. He was an old man, dying from illness and old age. He was hooked up to life support. You know, tubes running into his nose and an IV. And his hockey, uh, he didn't have his hockey. Because, remember, hockey is physical manifestation of your self-will. And he didn't have that anymore. And he still almost destroyed Marineford. He almost brought that entire island down into the watery grave. And then, at the end of it, when he's talking about, oh, he got hit by, like, 200 cannonballs, uh, 500 gunshot wounds, 67 stab wounds, or whatever the numbers were. I don't really remember what all that was. And he still died standing up, a hole in his chest from Akainu's magma, half of his 
face melted off. And he still died standing up and still almost destroyed Marineford. Took on two of the admirals, no problem. The world's strongest man. And Quixote didn't even flinch. Bring up Kaido. Oh, shit. So, I'm thinking that Kaido might not be more physically powerful than Whitebeard, but his... I don't want to say influence, because Whitebeard's influence was legendary. But... I'm guessing since Kaido has hockey, has his army of devil fruit users. I can't really say much more than that because because we don't know anything about him. We don't know what his powers are. We don't know how strong he is physically. We don't know uh, what his battle techniques are. We don't know nothing. And that's the part that worries me more than anything else. We know what Whitebeard could do. We know for a damn fact what he could do. And Kaido scares him more than Whitebeard. What? Kaido has to be one powerful influential, scary motherfucker to be able to make the scare the shit out of of the um, bleh, Do Flamingo. So, it's up in the air right now, because who knows? Uh, Quixote, uh, Kaido might have something on Quixote. Because well, let's face it, if you give up your ranking and your royalty just so you wouldn't have to deal with this guy, he must be insanely powerful to make you want to go, not worth it, not worth it, no, no, not worth it, no, no, no. So that's really all that I have at the moment. Like I said, we don't know a thing about Kaido. So I can't really give a full assessment onto his power level. But as things stand, he might be either slightly beneath Whitebeard's power or really damn close to scare uh, Dopamingo as much as he did. So, I'm done. I'll see you all next time. I'm going to make another video about this when we learn quite a bit more. Now, I'm not going to make a video that's mostly speculation, although that's all this one was. But, like I said, Kaido or Whitebeard? Who is the most powerful? Who is the bigger threat? That is the question for the moment. And I'm out.